Harry and Ginny ending up together always seemed a little strange to me. And that's not because I feel Harry should have ended up with Hermione. I think Ron and Hermione are perfect for each other. Check out my previous video essay if you'd like to see my thoughts on that. But we're talking about Harry and Ginny today. First off, I think it's worth noting that in order to judge their relationship, you have to decipher between the films and the books. In my opinion, Ginny from the films left a lot to be desired with her character, and is one of the few major issues I have with the films. It all starts when Ginny has a crush for Harry in the Chamber of Secrets. It starts as an infatuation to introduce her. I mean, it makes sense in the context of the story for Chamber of Secrets. We need to introduce her into the story organically. It just makes sense to have that preteen crush with one of the most famous people in their world. But then, as some characters do, they shed more light on the story at hand, and they never really develop her character past those dying moments in Chamber of Secrets until later on. In the movies, Jenny gets the shorthand of the stick, and she never really evolves into a character. Because of this, Jenny is much more subdued and quiet, and we never really get to see her as she is in the books. In the book, she's a feisty, strong, dynamic character, which makes it easy for us to see why Harry loves her. Although we see slight glimpses of this in the movies, in the books, we see this fully established character in all her glory. She wasn't afraid of anything, unlike how the movies painted her. So when it came to their relationship, Harry and Ginny in the books is far different than in the movies, mainly because those changes to her character affects how we feel about the two. And yes, the personalities mesh better together in the books, but I feel like it doesn't matter whether it's the book or the movie. I feel that this isn't the real reason that they ended up together. There is something rooted deep within the two of them that caused that love to blossom. Remember back to Jenny's first year at Hogwarts, the days where the heir of Slytherin was petrifying mudbloods. What ended up being revealed was not Draco or some other student being the heir of Slytherin, but instead Ginny was possessed into doing Tom Riddle's bidding. Now this is really important in my opinion, and I feel like this lays the groundwork for the relationship. Although the story sheds away a little bit from this possession and the events that follow the Chamber of Secrets, but I think it's safe to say that this possession deeply affected Jenny and she was really never the same. In the books, it explains this possession by saying, while the magical container is still intact, a bit of soul inside it can still flit, which means to move or sway. And out of someone, if they get too close to that object, I don't mean to hold it for too long, it's nothing about touching it, Hermione added before Ron could speak. I mean emotionally. Ginny poured her heart out into that diary, and she made herself incredibly vulnerable. You're in trouble if you get too fond of, or too dependent of, a horcrux. When Jenny found this diary and poured all her worries about Hogwarts and her crushes and how Tom wrote back, comforting her, through this dialogue, Tom grew stronger and ultimately poured a little bit of his soul into Ginny, manipulating her to kill Hagrid's roosters and open the Chamber of Secrets. Now let's think about this in a different way. Put yourself in Ginny's shoes. You're entering a new school, and really a new world for that matter, and are insecure and timid, and you're likely bullied because you're a Weasley and you're poor. I don't know about you, but I would cling on any support I could get. And in the case of Ginny, she turned to Tom Riddle's diary. She expressed her deepest dreams and aspirations. She was seeking comfort and relying on it as if it was a best friend, or even dare I say, a romantic connection. Now imagine if that comfort and that best friend led you astray. It led her to potential death of people at Hogwarts, to walking around possessed and killing roosters. And she ends up bringing her crush to an extremely dangerous situation where they only survive by the skin on their teeth. Now you can take this situation one of two ways. One, you let it destroy you and you recoil away from the ones who love you. Or two, you gain strength from it. You never let anyone do anything like this to you again or to the ones you love. Ginny obviously became stronger from this, but I believe this was more of an external approach. I still feel this possession of Tom Riddle over Jenny shakes her to her core. She won't ever be the same because of this, and no one will ever know how she feels. Well, no one except Harry. That childhood crush turns into something else. Harry knows what it's like to have Voldemort in his head and see his darkest secrets. Harry took that same weakness and overcame it and became stronger. It's the same reason why we go to support groups. Because those shared experiences and hearing people share, it helps us overcome our own demons. Ginny saw Harry first as a crush, and then saw him as a hero down in the Chamber of Secrets. But it wasn't until they grew up a bit, and they found each other's shoulder and shared experience, that it blossomed into more. 
I'm not saying that their love was completely attributed to this experience, but I believe it was a main factor in breaking down those walls that both of them had put up. And when you can understand what people are thinking and what's going on in their head, you're more empathetic towards them. So Harry and Jenny aren't a story about a crush that turned into friends, that turned into love. It's about that trauma and that shared experience and that empathy that turns into a lasting bond. So let me know what you think of this theory. Do you think they ended up together because they're both possessed by Voldemort? Special thanks to my patrons, Adam Gray, Jeremy Jacobs, Jenny Edwards, Jeremy Robson, Gabe Marchanda, Trevor Cowan, Gutter Legland, Sam Leon, and newcomer Colleen West. Thank you so much for your support, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.